I always tell people, if you're below average, just try to get to average. People try to go from below average income to wealthy. No, just try to step, step by step. That's also P. P is patient, practical patient. Welcome to today's training. Today is a wealth day. So we're gonna be training on wealth, three things today. Number one, wealth. Number two, your practical skills. So the P part of your personality. And then the third thing we're gonna be doing is managing your money, wealth. First thing <clears throat> that I'd like you to remember is that almost everything you ever heard about money isn't true. So if you wanna make money, you gotta reprogram your brain a little bit. The first way that I would reprogram my brain is uh, remember when people you might have heard, depending on the religion you grew up with, that money is the root of all evil. But if you really think hard about money and you look at statistics around the world, wherever there's poverty, that's where the, the, there's the most crime, the most injustice. That's been proven over and over again. So on this first concept of wealth, if you can really get in your brain that if you can use wealth correctly, you'll do a lot of good in the world. This will free you up from guilt trip, self-destruction. It'll keep you from the path that most people go on, which is to just make enough money that they can provide for themselves, but they can't help other people. So that's the number one principle. This is just a general principle. If you wanna train your brain, you wanna train your brain around these conscious kind of cues that hold us back, subconscious cues. And that's one, by far the biggest one. Most people have been guilt tripped about money. All right, the second thing, if you wanna create wealth, we've been talking, this whole program is built around your personality type. And there's four main parts, P-A-S-E, practical, action, social, emotional. You need to develop all four of them in balance. You don't wanna be strong in one and weak in the other. P is what we're gonna talk about today. P stands for practical. And if you're watching this, you'll know that you're a P person if you really, um, routine comes easy for you, math comes easy for you, doing your taxes and accounting comes easy for you in the sense that you don't mind sitting in one place and thinking things through. You're a P if you don't mind routine, you don't mind setting a date three weeks ahead of time for a dinner, you know, a dinner reservation. If you don't have much P, everything I just mentioned, you'll struggle with. And one of the goals is to strengthen your weaknesses, make your strengths even stronger, and then of course, learn all these practical things. One of the simplest ways to learn practical skills and develop that part of your personality is really get good with numbers. And this, by the way, of all the wealthy people I've ever met, and I just got to spend recent, this week some time with Elon Musk, every one of them, when you talk to them, you don't talk for very long before some number comes up. So if you grew up thinking math is hard or numbers aren't important, they are important. They're the language of money. Well, I'm gonna do a little drill, just a practical thing. And you can do something like this. You don't have to do it with basketball. I like to just get in the habit every day of saying some numbers to myself. So I'm gonna shoot 10 free throws and I'm just gonna go one for one. One for two, uh, two for two. Missed, two for three. Three for four. Now why, what am I doing? I'm holding different numbers in my head and that's very important. Even though it's not super calculus or anything, it's developing that part of your brain that get good at numbers. And don't ever let somebody trick you. You have to be decent with numbers to create wealth for yourself. Four for five. Five for six. Ooh, lucky dropped in. Six for seven. Seven for eight. Oh, lucky me. Eight for nine. The most important thing is not whether you're making them or not. Are you holding the numbers in your head? Hello, helicopter come. Oh, didn't focus at the end. Eight for 10. Then I want to do a little math in my own head. Eight for 10 is 80%. If you struggle with percentages, go online, do a few little percentages. The most important thing you need to know uh, when it comes to making money is percentages and ratios. That's generally 
where you'll get the biggest bang for the buck. You don't need to know calculus. So the second thing is, today, at some point, whatever you're doing, try to hold a few numbers in your head. It can be playing basketball. It can be if you have three errands to run, be like one for two. Or I mean, one for three, two for three, three for three. Just get in the habit, make lists, and make sure you number them. A lot of times I meet people that aren't good with P side of their personality. You, they have it in them, but they haven't developed it. And they'll make a list and not number it. They'll just be like, you know, go to the grocery store, get whatever, clean the house and make dinner. And I'm like, no, add numbers to that. The third thing, let's talk about managing money, some practical skills. The first thing with managing money is realizing the most important um, facet of your financial uh, life that you can understand is cash flow, money in and out. It's not always about profit because when you get more advanced with accounting, you can actually have a profit but have no positive cash flow. And cash flow, the easiest way to understand it without getting too complicated is bank accounts either going up or down. And the first thing you want to do in life before you try to make a million dollars or six figures is you have to stop the, you have to change the direction of your bank account. And um, so that's a point a understand your monthly cash flow. So if I asked you right now, what was your bank accounts cash flow last month? Was it positive or negative? Simple. If it went up, it's positive. If it went down, it's negative. And you want it to either be at the worst case flat line. You don't want it to be negative. It doesn't take long of letting yourself go negative that you can't recover from it. It's pretty dangerous. Uh, the next thing that's, that's kind of sub point a sub point and notice how I'm doing this lesson today. It has like numbers and sub points and all that. That's me showing you the, my P side of my personality, which is also, I speak a little slower enunciate a little better when you're doing P you're very like down to earth and uh, easy to follow. You're not aggressive. You're not loud. You're not sensitive. It's just kind of point by point. So the first one, A, point A is understand your cash flow direction, up, down, or flat line. Flat line means it just stayed the same. Try to not have it flat line for too long. Point B, you have to have what I call an opportunity fund. Open a savings account or another checking account and literally go into your online banking and change the name to opportunity account. And every month put some money in there because if you don't, I've made this mistake miss out on buying awesome things, Maxim Magazine, basketball teams, all this stuff when you don't have any cash left aside. And some people call it a savings account. I don't like savings account just because nobody likes to save, but everybody likes opportunities. So you have to understand your psychology by calling it opportunity fund. For me, I'm more likely to put money in because I don't want to miss out on opportunities. Every month, I would say, ideally, try to take 1% at the very minimum of what you make. So that doesn't sound like very much, but at the beginning, you're just trying to get in a habit. So if you make $3,000 a month, 1% of that is 30 bucks. Everybody can do that. And the reason I say 1% is in the United States, that's the average savings rate, 1%. So I, I always tell people, if you're below average, just try to get to average. People try to go from below average income to wealthy. No, just try to step, step by step. That's also P. P is patient, practical, patient. So 1%, every time you get a paycheck, however much it is, 1,500 bucks, put $15. You make 10,000 bucks, put $100. Now, I'm not saying you can't put more than that, but that's the absolute minimum, just 1%. Everybody can do that. Even if you think you're broke, you can always find a way to save 1%. The third thing, C, and this is under point three, to manage your money. So the first practical tip, know your direction of your cash flow. That negative, positive, flat line. B is open an opportunity account and put 1% minimum, you can put more. And then C, and this is a very important one, you have to start taking money that you make. This is not the opportunity fund. This is a completely separate conversation. Whatever's making you money right now, you need to take, and we'll just go easy here, but I'm gonna give a slightly larger percent. Take 3% of that, of your monthly paycheck or monthly income and reinvest it back into what's working. And here's what I mean. Let's say you work at Starbucks 
So that's what's paying the bills right now. And you make three grand a month. 3% of three grand is how much? Anybody know? A 3%. 90 bucks, right? 90 bucks. Take 90 bucks and buy something. It could be a book, it could be a training program, it could be a sales course on something that will help you get ahead at Starbucks. So I would start out with a how to be good with people book because if you're a barista or something like that, so 3%. Now, if you're making 10 grand, 3% of 10 grand is $300. If you're an entrepreneur and you're making your money through internet marketing, make sure at least you spend $300 doubling down on your own brain. So this is a 3% education fund for whatever's working. So if you're an online marketer and you're selling cat t-shirts, then make sure you spend it and you're making $10,000 positive cash flow. Spend 300 bucks learning more how to market t-shirts. That's a very simple thing, but I can't tell you how few people double down and invest money in what's working. And if you don't do that, um, it's a fool's game. Because if it's working now and you invest more into it, it generally will continue to work. So that's the three sub points of number three. So I gave you a lot of points today. Okay, till tomorrow, talk to you soon.